and one. Okay. okay. So um, this is the Pussy Hat project that we're working on, Susie and I. I'm Laura, and uh, this is my sewing school, Laura's Sewing School in Arlington, Mass. So what we're doing is that I'm laying out this yard and a half. You can get 15 hats out of a yard and a half of fabric. It's pretty amazing. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cut it. Now, what you can look at is that this is the long side, and it doesn't stretch much. And the print margin is along there. That's the selvage. What you want is that you want the hats to go across. This is the stretch, okay? What we're going to do first is I'm matching up these edges. And I'm going to pull this down till this, I'm putting the fold on the zero mark on the mat, and I'm pulling this so until the shortest edge is just past zero here. I've got to get a rotary cutter and a ruler. Okay. So I'm going to take this and put this on zero and then cut like that and cut that off. And you see, I I'm just throw that away. Then you're going to go up because the pieces you need are 17 by 11 and a half. I'm going to go up to 17 here, line that up there, and I'm going to cut at 17. Then I'm going to go up to 34 and cut at 34. And then I'm going to go up to, well, let's see, what's at 51. And if it turns out you have a little bit left, then maybe you can use it for a headband or some other thing like that if you want to. Uh, you can also practice your stitching on it. Now that I've got three strips of 17, um, the right side of the fabric, you'll see sometimes they look pretty much the same, but it's a little more distinct on this side. You can tell it's the right side because the printing is right side up on there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack these so that I can then cut three layers at once, okay? So I'm going to go like this and lay this out and try not to stretch it too much because it can distort. And I'm going to lay this so that this print margin right here is going to get cut off. I'm going to put that just past the zero line. And then I'll just take this and smooth this down like that with trying not to stretch it. Now that I've got one, I'm going to put the same side, the same margin, because you'll see that the margins are different. This one has printing on it but this one doesn't really, it's a little different, but um, we're gonna put all the print margins on top of each other and we're gonna do it so we can read the words because that's the right side of the hat. That's the right side of the fabric. So I'm gonna put that on there and then I'll just lift and waft this without trying to stretch it, you know, because it will stretch this way. Yeah, that looks good. And I'll grab the last piece. And again, I'm looking at this print margin to make sure the letters, I can read them. I'm putting those so that that is right side up. So I'm putting them all right side up. The more consistent you can do this, the more easy it is to, to make these and make a bunch of them because we want to share them with all of our friends. And so anyway, I'm going to just go like this and I'm just letting that down like that. Now I can take my rotary cutter and ruler. Now, if you don't have a rotary cutter and ruler, I'm just following the marks of the mat here, but if you don't have a rotary cutter and ruler, you can measure and mark lines. Like you, you can draw a line along here, parallel to the edge. You can measure down 17, or we're gonna do actually 11 and a half now, and measure and then draw the line together. What I would use for marking fleece is something called a friction pen, F-R-I-X-I-O-N. Actually, I wouldn't use the pen. I would use the marker because the pen has a gel ball, and, and so it has to roll, whereas the friction marker, which I'll pull out right here, I have a box of them. This right here has a marker, and you can just go like that and just touch the fleece, and you get a mark. And that mark, if you really don't want it, will disappear with um, steam. But the marks we're gonna do, if we make marks on these, are gonna be inside the hat, so it doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ruler, this is at zero because I just cut off that selvage, that print margin, and I'm going to go over to 11 and a half, and I'm going to cut at 11 and a half. Now, 11 and a half and 11 and a half is 23. So I'm going to put this ruler down at 23 and cut. Okay, now one thing about this ruler, it's got suede on the back. They make cork back rulers too. Those are really great for it not slipping. You know, you can use your gridded rulers too for quilting. That works fine. 
Now it's 23, it's gonna be 34 and a half. One thing you may wanna do is actually write on a piece of paper the multiples of 11 and a half, because I actually made a mistake earlier tonight when I wasn't thinking 11 and a half and 11 and a half, I did 11 and a half, then I did 22. So we have some smaller hats for people with smaller heads. <laughs> <laughs> Making hats for everyone. Okay, so now it's 34 and a half. It's going to be 46 here. And then I've got 57 and a half is going to be my next one. And what's really cool about this, I'm going to have very little waste. That's it. So then now I have just cut 15 halves. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this since I had it right side up. I'm going to fold it right sides together like this and stack them like this all in the same way. And so this makes it very easy. I don't have to say, well, which side is the right side, which side is the wrong side. Oh, I have to flip this one this way, but this one has to go that way. You know, I'm not doing that. And so then I keep stacking until I have a whole stack that I can take to the sewing machine. Okay, then that's it. Hot.